I saw this post and I thought it's absolutely excellent. Uh, and if you watch Yuri Bezmanov, which is a KGB defector, and he's got uh, a couple of lectures on communism, he also says the same thing, that the people who are the revolutionaries, the people that are the intelligentsia behind communism, are also the first ones to get shot. So this guy uh, claims to be uh, Russian and that he was born in the Soviet Union. Uh, his grandpa was KGB and his dad was KGB. You know, be, being anonymous, this doesn't really matter because you can't verify it. But anyway, what, what he says makes perfect sense. So he says that, uh, I have a message for you, comrades. The, com the communism you dream about will never happen. I will tell you what will happen. If a socialist revolution or wealth redistribution will occur, what do you think this proletariat and oppressed people are? You? No. You hipster cunts are the harmful bourgeoisie element. The true ones are the rednecks, white trash, and hood rats. You hipsters may lead the revolution at the initial stage, but they will be the revolutionaries and they will hate you with the strongest class hate with all your fancy college education and iPods. Southern rednecks are more likely to form a common bond with ghetto gangs than with the intellectuals. It has been proven many times in many lands where communism was forced that when class warfare begins, the races and nations forget the hate and unite. So that's what's going to happen. Someone will knock at your door of your house in your nice middle class gated community. When you will open the door, you will find Commissar Jamal and Commissar Cletus who will tell you that having such a big house for yourself is not what the true communist does. And two families of hobos are moving in with you. You will be allowed to have one room, one bed, and necessary personal belongings. Everything else in the house will be shared. To be fair, uh, I, I disagree a little bit with him. Um, what actually happens is that your gated community is going to be bulldozed, every single house. And they're going to build tenants instead. You know, one, one room tenants. Because one room tenants houses more people. Uh, so, so that's pretty much what's going to happen, or your gated community is going to be taken away from you and given to the inner party members. Also a possibility. Um, <clears throat> the rich guys whose money you are about to redistribute left the country, and suddenly you realize that they and their money in their Swiss bank accounts are unreachable, and there's nothing left to redistribute. The corporations go bankrupt, collapsing the DOW index, which makes the currency just a fancy green paper worth nothing. And then you realize that the United States was importing food, because there wasn't enough food produced to support 300 million people. Importing the food comes paying with dollars, which is now worth nothing. And then there's hunger. And to suppress the hunger, angry mob... Uh, who doesn't give a fuck about high Marxist ideals and just wants to make everything like it was before, Red Terror starts with the new NKVD and purges. Eventually, Commissar Jamal will put you on your knees and shoot you at the back of your stupid head for not being dedicated enough. Welcome to 1917. Now, what I really like about this is that not only it's historical accurate, like if you look at certain uh, countries that followed socialism, this is exactly what's happened. But there, there is also one of my favorite books about communism. And I keep mentioning this because it's, it's a very small book that everyone can read. It doesn't, doesn't take a while. It's called The Conquest of Bread. And what's interesting about this book is that it's actually written by a communist before the formation of the USSR. And everything you find here, every, every little detail, Peter Kropotkin in his book The Conquest of Bread already foreseen that it's going to happen word for word. He actually pointed that when the revolution starts, you're going to have the journalists and you're going to have the intelligentsia, you know, the university professors and everyone that supports socialists, they're going to think they're the leaders. Uh, they're, they're going to tell other people what to do. But the thing is, once you push an identity on people strong enough, once you push the class identity on people strong enough, the people are going to obviously think that everyone who's above them is the bourgeoisie. So it's the, the poorest people of society, like this gentleman describes, the rednecks and the hood rats, 
that are going to foresee everyone that's wealthier than them to be the bourgeoisie. And, and they're going to attack you. They're going to, to, to show the, the hugest amount of hate and disdain because that's what communism does. It, it preaches hate and disdain for the upper classes. And, and these people are usually uh, high in number, the, the hoodlums and the rednecks. They, they, they have the numbers and they're, they actually have the um, experience with street thuggishness. And, and they're the ones that eventually are going to dominate the uh, and, and form the backbone of the revolution. It's not, it's not the people with the iPods. It's not the members of Antifa. You know, it's not, it's not the ones that are actually wanting communism now. They, they will have the first stages of the revolution and they will be able to preach their hate and try to push this identity upon people. But but eventually, you know, the, the, the working class is just going to go in a bar and they're going to ask, like, why, why are these rich fucks telling us what to do? Um, and, and you notice this is social justice as well. Social justice is not about class, it's about race. Uh, and instead of the bourgeoisie, you have the white man. And, and you have all these uh, white people that are constantly, you know... Uh, Telling others, you need to check your privilege, white people are being uh, oppressive, yada, yada, yada. And then you notice how they turn on white people. You know, the, the ones they educated to hate white people, surprisingly, they turn against them. Like, uh, uh, f for instance, Joss Whedon. You know, he, he was constantly lecturing about feminism and social justice until the, the, the army that he created turned against himself. Because he's white, you know. Uh, another example is uh, the articles that are coming now attacking uh, white women who uh, were part of intersectional feminism and they were ta constantly talking about, oh, uh, being white is bad. And now it's being turned against them because the, the minorities that they, they cultivate, quote, quote unquote, you know, they, they try to indoctrinate with this ideology, they uh, are going to at one point say, hold on a bit, they're white. Why, why don't do we have them as leaders? Why, why do we allow them to talk? You know, we, we need to uh, <clears throat> not put up with this. Because it's not feminist enough. It needs to be more feminist. And it's the same with, the, with communism. It's uh, the, the same idea. It's like, what, why do we have to put up with these people? They have glasses. They have iPhones. They, they, they're part of the intelligentsia. They, they're the problem. They're the problem and they need to be taken down. So, honestly, I, I don't think there is anything more funny than seeing wealthy socialists. Champagne socialists advocating for communism. Um, and someone asked me the question, it's like, well, V, if they, if they don't have a job, how are they also wealthy? You know, how they, are they champagne socialists? Because their parents give them money, right? You, you see a lot of kids that don't have a job, uh, that don't do anything productive, but they're being showered with money and, and shit from their parents. Uh, and because they have nothing better to do, they, they want to feel like they're doing something, you know, because they don't actually have a job. They want to feel like, like they're helping the world. And they think they do this by pushing for socialism. They think they do this by pushing for communism. Uh, and, and it's absolutely delusional. Hope you, you enjoyed this reading.